Where did our species originate, and how did we disperse around the world from there? The hand axe was the only instrument utilized by the people of Egypt between 700,000 and 70,000 years ago, yet, the variety and sophistication of ancient Egyptian tools started to increase. Before coming into Neanderthals in the Levant, early Homo sapiens spent some time in a lush Arabia. Their equipment was more specialized, such as the scraper that was made just for scraping hides. To begin making a garment for clothing, they would take a scraper that is about 4 inches long, hold it in their hand, scrape the flesh from the hide, and then scrape the hair off the hide. Some 70,000 years ago, early people struggled to survive in the Nile Valley. The hand axes and scrapers used by Neanderthals are frequently discovered in the desert. This indicates that Egypt was not a desert environment when the tools were being made, rather, it was a moister region. Egypt's climate has significantly varied over time. Human sapiens fished and consumed mollusks and shellfish when they first arrived in the Nile Valley. The Nile was starting to dry up a little at that time, and there were tiny crowds of people gathered beside lakes. The first question has a convincing answer thanks to genetic studies. Our contemporary human ancestors originated in Africa and spread over Eurasia, beginning around 70,000 years ago. Now, two American archaeologists assert that they have discovered the path that those earliest Homo sapiens traveled to populate the Earth. Researchers suggest that our ancestors took a detour through Arabia, pausing there for about 50,000 years when it was a verdant oasis by following the broken trail of stone tools that contemporary humans left behind like breadcrumbs marking their way. They continued their trek to the Middle East, where they initially came across Neanderthals. Around 150,000 years ago, early Homo sapiens, known from fossils discovered at Omo and Herto in Ethiopia, started creating stone tools in the Nile Valley of Egypt. Prior research has shown how they traveled from Africa through Egypt and the Levant. A second, more southern path across Arabia, where modern human populations remained for almost 50,000 years, before migrating north to the Levant, has been discovered by new study. They interbred with Neanderthals there, maybe stealing some of their methods for manufacturing tools. The researchers claim that stylistic and manufacturing similarities help them to distinguish between artifacts produced in Israel, the Arabian Peninsula, and Egypt's Nile Valley in chronological order. Like the development of modern technology, their tools become smaller and more advanced with time. Fossils from locations like Omo and Herto in Ethiopia suggest that our species originated in Africa, some 200,000 years ago. However, the populations these fossils represent did not start acting truly modern until later, despite the fact that they appear modern. In terms of toolmaking, the Emerin toolkit, which dates to roughly 50,000 years ago, marks the change between prehistoric and contemporary human behavior. But ever since the discovery of the earliest Emerin tools, including points, blades, and scrapers, in a cave close to the Sea of Galilee in Israel, archaeologists have been perplexed as to when this more complex method of toolmaking initially emerged. According to archaeologist Jeff Rose, archaeologists have always focused so much on out of Africa and into the Middle East, that we've missed an entire chapter of the human expansion in Arabia. However, where did these tools come from? The Emerin tool is the important bridging technology. Did the technology originate in Arabia or Africa? Throughout Arabia, northeastern Africa, and the Middle East, Rose researched every stone instrument he could get his hands on. According to a recent analysis, the evolution of stone tools in the area started in the Nile Valley of Egypt, between 150,000 and 130,000 years ago. These nilotic hunters and gatherers in Egypt, created Nubian tools by methodically chipping away the sides of a stone core to create a single triangle tip that could be, for example, affixed to a spear. Some experts contend that the Egyptian Nubian toolmakers traveled to Arabia first, and that it was their Arabian descendants who would subsequently produce the Emerin tool, instead of the Middle East, where they are thought to have invented the Emerin tool. The Dofa Nubian and the Mudayan industries of Oman are described by the researchers in their paper as two distinct types of toolkits, that appear to be offshoots of the Egyptian Nubian in Arabia, and were created 110,000 to 50,000 years ago. Stone points change in size and shape with time, resembling Emerin tools more and more from the Dofa Nubian to the Mudayan, possibly because modern humans used them as projectile points to hunt smaller, swifter moving animals as the environment became drier and finding food more difficult. 
Most likely, those who created the Mudayan implements in Oman were involved in rodent and lizard hunting. By chipping away the margins of a core, early modern people or perhaps even Neanderthals made triangular points in Egypt. Middle Eastern contemporary people later developed a method that was more effective. According to their theory, the Middle East was invaded by Arabian toolmakers around 75,000 years ago, when the environment in Arabia drastically changed. Arabia was experiencing a severe drought at the time, which dried up lakes and underground streams and turned pastures into sand dunes. In contrast, one hypothesis states that 60,000 years ago, the Middle East's environment started to become wetter and more humid, luring animals, and hunters, northward. There, modern humans made an important discovery. They discovered how to repeatedly strike many elongated blades from the top and bottom of a single core, a characteristic of the Emerin tool and later Upper Paleolithic industries. Rather than producing just one tool from a single stone by striking the core in one direction, from top to bottom, as their Nubian ancestors did. In an unexpected turn of events, the researchers also suggest that contemporary humans who created the Emerin tools were inspired by ancient people, presumably Neanderthals, who left behind fossils in Israel between 70,000 and 50,000 years ago, as well as by more basic tools, known as Mousterian. The Emerin tools, according to the researchers, are systematically created in the same way as Egyptian Nubian tools but closely resemble the regional Mousterian tools. The period is consistent with genetic research that contends modern humans and Neanderthals interbred when they reached the Middle East. A 55,000-year-old modern human skull from Israel's Manat Cave was recently studied, adding to the body of evidence suggesting modern humans lived there alongside Neanderthals. Not everyone concurs that the Emirin hunter-gatherers' Neanderthal neighbors had an influence on the development of their tools. According to Harvard University archaeologist Ofer Bar Yosef, who proposed the Emerin tool was created by Egyptian Nubians who migrated directly to the Middle East a decade ago. The Emerin has nothing to do with Neanderthals. The long and meandering road that led to modern tools may have taken a significant detour through Arabia, regardless of who inspired the Emerin toolmakers. Paleoanthropologist Chris Stringer of the Natural History Museum in London believes that the Arabian region was not just the route to somewhere else, as it has often been considered in various dispersal scenarios. For early modern humans and possibly Neanderthals as well, it was occasionally a major location in and of itself. An extremely significant invention that came about during this time was the bow and arrow. The bow was the first such piece of equipment to store potential energy. The energy can all be transferred to the arrow when it is shot by bending the wood and holding it in a string. In particular, flaking arrow points were needed for the weapon's development. Microtools, or arrow points the size of your thumbnail, were found by archaeologists in southern Egypt, where they were employed for bird hunting. They succeeded despite it being a difficult task to flake a shape like this and connect it to the arrow shaft. Progress surged when Homo sapiens honed their toolmaking skills. Before the bow and arrow arrived, 500,000 years went by with only the hand axe. Nobody alive today has seen a volcanic explosion remotely comparable to the Toba super eruption. But our forefathers may have done so tens of thousands of years ago, when northern Sumatra burst, producing the loudest sound ever heard by mankind, and forming a caldera that is today home to the world's largest volcanic lake. But when precisely did this historic event take place? Scientists now put a date on the Toba super eruption in an article published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. The event happened 73,880 years ago, with only 640 years of uncertainty, with 95% confidence. This megacolossal eruption was Toba's third, and largest, in the last million years, and the most explosive on Earth in over 2 million years. More than 7 trillion tons of volcanic material were ejected, with much of it hurled as ash across the Indian Ocean and nearby landmasses in South and Southeast Asia covering several million square kilometers of the planet's surface with debris. In fact, scientists were taken aback by the amount of ash discovered in the Lake Malawi record in East Africa. The ash is extremely fine, consisting of shards of volcanic glass little larger than the width of a human hair. Yet, even within a few hundreds of miles of an eruption core, we sometimes only discover less than 100 shards of glass within a gram of sediment in a number of prior records they've worked on. In Lake Malawi, 
there are hundreds of pieces of glass per gram, demonstrating how dense the youngest Toba Tuff was. If you're anything like me, you're probably amazed that a volcano can be so powerful that glass fragments can be dumped 7,300 kilometers distant. Nonetheless, the Toba Mega Explosion was one of the most powerful in Earth's history, ejecting at least 2,800 times the amount of material as Mount St. Helens did in 1980. The Toba Ashfall, on the other hand, was a lightning-fast occurrence that was properly timed. The shard deposition was most likely two weeks long, instantaneous in geological terms. Scientists discovered that the Toba eruption had no substantial detrimental influence on East African vegetation growth, which they think would hammer the last nail in the coffin of the Toba disaster idea. Also, shortly after the eruption, the indigenous populations improved their toolmaking abilities. There is an immediate rise in artifact bones and notably burning after we view the volcanic glass shards. That's also when we see the little bladelets, which we know have been heat-treated to increase their strength. In fact, a cache of bone tools discovered in South Africa suggests that people have been acting like people for much longer than previously assumed. The discovery may also call into question prevailing beliefs about what drove our ancient forefathers to abandon Africa. It is largely assumed that groups of modern people, Homo sapiens, left Africa between 75,000 years ago, a scenario known as the Out of Africa Theory. Homo sapiens began to dominate the world when Neanderthals and other hominids mysteriously fell extinct. Scientists have concentrated on behaviors deemed to be unique to humans, like as language and art, to explain that distinctive success. According to one prominent explanation, before leaving Africa, Homo sapiens went through a creative explosion, developing sophisticated toolmaking ability, linguistic capabilities, and other characteristics that helped them survive in a variety of habitats. Yet, it is still debatable how rapidly people departed Africa after obtaining these skills. The timing of the Toba eruption and the global distribution of modern humans may not have been coincidental. Humans may have learned to precisely heat arrowheads with ash from the Toba eruption, making them stronger, easier to produce, and more accurate. Bone tools discovered in South Africa's Blombos Cave, around 300 kilometers from Cape Town, may help settle the debate. Scientists detail their research of 28 of these well-constructed bone tools, which were likely employed as awls for working hides to produce clothing or bags, or as projectile tips for weapons, in the Journal of Human Evolution. Because the exterior coating required to date the bones had worn away, the scientists utilized carbon dating and laser technology to determine the age of charcoal and seashells found in the same sand layer as the implements. Scientists determined that the sand was deposited at least 74,000 years ago, therefore tools created after this date are superior to those created before the eruption. The regulated use of fire was a game-changer in human evolution. It first provided heat and light before allowing the physical properties of materials to be modified in order to produce ceramics and metals. The examination of artifacts from several locations reveals that the source stone materials were carefully altered with fire to increase their flaking qualities. Indeed, heat treatment predominates among silkrete tools 74,000 years ago, and appears as early as 164,000 years ago at Pinnacle Point on South Africa's south coast. Heat treatment necessitates a sophisticated understanding of fire as well as enhanced cognitive ability, and comes at the same time as widespread evidence for symbolic conduct. Scientists discovered stone tools that had been heated to over 600 degrees Fahrenheit. Heat treating a stone, most likely by burying it in a fire, made it simpler to nap, or form into a tool by striking it with another stone. Researchers were analyzing items dating from 74,000 to 164,000 years ago that would have been manufactured by modern humans from the African Middle Stone Age at multiple sites on the South African coast. Scientists said they discovered blades made of a stone called silkrete at the site that did not match silkrete acquired from outcroppings in the vicinity, and knew they were missing something. They tested their hypothesis by heat-treating sample of the stone themselves. As they took it out of the fire and flaked it, it looked just like the stone they were finding at the site. The researchers had to demonstrate that the tools they discovered were purposely heated to increase workability, rather than accidentally heated by a wildfire or other reasons. They discovered tools in regions where there was no trace of fire. They also tested some of the artifacts, including one that revealed that flaked surfaces had a glossiness that happens only when the stone is heated, 
proving that the stones were heated first and then fashioned into tools. The discovery also adds weight to the notion that modern humans were sophisticated and involved in significantly more complicated behavior than the Neanderthals who lived at the same period. This is just another example of how modern humans achieved discoveries that Neanderthals did not. The association of complex, mechanically launched projectiles with anatomically modern humans has sparked renewed interest in the origins of these weapons in various geographic locales. These investigations are focused on processes associated to human evolution, specifically roots of humans spread out of Africa, where the oldest complex projectiles have been reported. What's more, complex projectiles involving a launching apparatus, such as a bow or spear thrower, are largely acknowledged as a technological attribute of modern humans. The huge time difference between the earliest sophisticated projectiles discovered in Middle Stone Age contexts, and their counterparts in Europe and Asia, supports the hypothesis that these effective and universal weapons were brought by tribes scattered out of Africa, some 75,000 years ago. Yet, tracking specific paths of modern human expansions based on technologies connected with complicated projectiles remains difficult. If the dates are correct, the tools indicate that modern behavior began long before Homo sapiens migrated out of Africa. Moreover, the tools may put into question whether the larger brains that contributed to the creative explosion also drove humans to leave Africa. Some researchers, however, are suspicious of this timeline, 